Today on Homeworthy, we're taking you to one of the biggest antique fairs in the country, Round Top, Texas. Every year, the fair sees over 100,000 designers, dealers, and enthusiasts alike, all hoping to head home with unique finds and curiosities to dress up their spaces. We got the inside scoop on where to stay, eat, how to shop, and what to expect from Stephanie Lane Disney, the showrunner for two of the biggest venues at Round Top. Hi, Stephanie. I'm so excited to be chatting with you about Round Top. Um, we know this is the big antique festival in Texas where people come from all over the world um, to shop and eat and learn. So we're really excited to hear from you, the show manager of Big Red Barn and Blue Hills. We know you're in full swing. You just had opening weekend. So can you paint the picture for us? It was great. We um, had a little bit of rain, but shoppers didn't mind. We had thousands of people come in for opening weekend. And what's fun about Round Top is there's so much buildup and the dealers spend over a week or more getting ready and setting up their spaces and merchandising everything um, in a really dynamic way. And then all of a sudden, everything gets cleaned up and boxes are, you know, boxes are thrown away, everything's unpacked, open the gates, and thousands of shoppers come in and the energy completely changes. And um, so it was a super fun weekend. We had a great turnout. Um, we're looking forward to a great show. And who's there? Like, who are the shoppers that you're seeing? Are they mainly designers? Are we just having homeowners come shop for their homes? Like, what are we, what are the people like? In Round Top, it's a little bit of everything. You're definitely going to have lots of design groups coming in. They usually want to get to each show right when it opens. So at Blue Hills, we had um, a really fantastic Dallas designer. She was the first in line and she got to Blue Hills probably at like 630 in the morning to wait until go gates opened at nine to get in to get the best finds first before anybody else could. So definitely a lot of designers and then lots of people shopping for their own homes, lots of people flying in because it's a bucket list item they've always wanted to do. We also see like creative groups from around the country coming and bringing their teams for inspiration, like inspirational trips. A lot of fashion brands will do that. Um, so yeah, kind of a hodgepodge of people across um, all sectors, I would say. How many people is it usually? Because I know you have this spring show and the fall show are like the bigger ones. Um, and then you have a smaller one in the winter. How many people are we seeing at these bigger shows? So for all of Round Top, like for the whole fall and spring, it's usually like 100 to 200,000 people total will come wow. in. Um, at our venues, like Blue Hills, we usually see 50 to 65,000 over the 15 days we're open and on the bigger days, like our opening day um, or later in the week, once like all the venues are open, we'll see like upwards of 7,000 people a day. Can you tell me about Blue Hills and Big Red Barn? Uh, how many vendors are at each? And I know you mentioned briefly that they start setting up a week in advance. Are they hauling in trucks? Like how do they get the, their tents set up, filled with antiques and furniture and art? Yeah, so uh, Blue Hills, we have uh, around 75 uh, different uh, antique vendors. And then at the Big Red Barn, we have more like 150. The difference is Blue Hills is pretty sprawling. Most dealers have a fairly large space um, square footage wise, where at the Big Red Barn, the spaces tend to be a little bit smaller. Um, so a lot of dealers shop in Europe, so they will spend the rest of the year when they're not doing shows in Europe, buying and then packing containers and having them shipped back. And then um, they truck all of that furniture to Round Top, unload it all, set it all up, sell for two weeks, pack up what didn't sell, take it back to their warehouse or wherever you know, they're from and then do it all again. So um, it's amazing to see the transformation of like an empty tent or an empty barn. And then it's full. And like, not only is it full, but a lot of these dealers spend 
you know, a week merchandising. And so the displays are amazing. And um, then they take it all down and then it's empty again. So I think that's why people love the experience. It's such a unique experience. And is the whole town, because I know Round Top is a small town, is like the whole town kind of setting up all year for these events? Yes. So I would say in with social media and um and all of that, it has Roundtop has changed dramatically in the last 10 years. So they do there are a lot of dealers who are just doing the show, but now have opened up permanent year-round locations in Round Top. So Round Top has become like a fabulous place to just have a weekend getaway. You could shop antiques or all sorts of design things all weekend long when the show is not open and still have like a great experience, I would say. But yes, during um, during the show, it the population swells so much that they have to be able to accommodate. So yes, everybody kind of preps for that, whether it's restaurants or year-round retail, they're all bringing in more goods, doing special events for the show only, things like that. Um, but Round Top itself is actually a very small geographic area. So the show really takes place in like three to five little towns all along the same highway. So um, Round Top itself, though, is kind of where most of the restaurants are concentrated, um, several, and it's very walkable. So like there's several lovely boutique hotels, lots of restaurants. So if you were to stay in Round Top proper, you could walk to lots of um, establishments. So now we kind of want to hear what we do once we're in Round Top in order to be a successful shopper. We're on the ground. Tell us your guide, 24 hours in Round Top. Where are we getting our morning coffee? Where are we getting breakfast? Where are we heading first? Okay, so perfect day in Round Top. I would say, like, first, just be prepped. Like, you want to be ready for anything. You want to be ready for, like, all four seasons in one day because it's Texas and you're out in the field. Um, so I'd say you want to have, like, the outfit and all the things. Be prepped. Um, so I would start the day in, uh, in Round Top. And our favorite places to get breakfast are Mill Street Cafe or the Round Top Coffee Shop. Both are great. And then from there, I would say like head to Blue Hills or Big Red Barn. Um, obviously, I'm biased, but uh, would recommend those. You could spend a couple hours at each and then move on to lunch. And one of our, our favorite lunch spots are Boone and Company in Round Top. It's got like the best kale salad I've ever had in my life. And it's super charming. Or if you want to go a little more um, Texas, you could go to Merritt Meat Co., which is fantastic barbecue. And that's also in Round Top in um, Hinkle Square. So those would be those wrecks. And then for the afternoon, there's a great little, you can kind of choose your own adventure. I would say if you want to dig and like go find treasures that might be super affordable and you're good with digging to find it, I would say like venture down to Warrington where you can park and then just walk these huge fields full of tents and like a thousand vendors probably. Um, and you can find anything from really neat vintage boots and clothing to like European antiques, just depending on where you are. There's a huge high and low um, and it's super fun. It's that quintessential round top experience. If you want a more curated experience and you don't want to dig, which is totally fine, you can go to um, a little grouping of venues. It's Market Hill and um, the Arbor's and um, the halls and Cisco Village, they're all very close to each other. So you can kind of like ping pong around to that grouping. Um, so we'd recommend doing that too. So those are kind of like two options I give when people are looking for um, advice on how to plan their day. Um, and then I would end the night um, going back to Round Top. And if you want like a fancy night out, I would go to Lul Lulu's Italian. It's the loveliest Italian restaurant and they have a beautiful bar attached to it. So that's kind of the 
the fancy option. And then if you want to go like quintessential OG round top, I would go to Royer's, which has the best fried chicken in Texas. And Royer's has been around since forever. It's, it's like the original round top restaurant. Um, and then I would end the night at um, Ellis Motel, which is a super fun bar in Hinkle Square. And so you can walk from Lulu's or Royer's to Ellis Motel and end your night there. But so, okay, as far as lodging, Hotel Lulu, which is connected to Lulu's Italian restaurant and that bar is beautiful. Um, it books really far in advance. It's very small, but it's like just a beautiful boutique hotel. So that would be one recommendation. And then the Round Top Inn is also in the walkable area of Round Top. And that's a great place to stay. Um, the Frenchie is great. It's a little bit further, but just like right, it's in Round Top, but not necessarily walkable to everything. But they have um, like dining on site and a pool and it's a very fun place like if you're with a group of girlfriends to stay um so those are a few lodging recommendations great um well you mentioned that to pack for all the seasons because as I know Texas it does change one of the things I wanted to ask you because I feel like besides layers this is kind of like a sporting event for people like you said you're digging you're you're running from venue to venue and um just on your feet all day what do you recommend like shoe wise are is everyone decked out in boots and cool outfits or are people in sneakers like get down and dirty type of gear so you'll definitely see everything there there are definitely women ready to shop and they're like in sneakers um rain boots and you know workout clothes um and they are not you know, they're, they're going to get their shopping done no matter what they've got a um, measuring tape on their belt, you know? Um, but round top fashion has definitely become a thing, um, in the last several years. So you will see groups of women dressed to the nines and they're like Texas chic, lots of cowboy hats and cowboy boots and cute dresses, um, and all of that too. So my advice would be, you know, chic function. So hats are very functional because there's not always a lot of shade and you're going to be out in the sun, even if it's not hot, like Texas sun is brutal. So would definitely recommend a hat. Um, and then shoes you can walk in and that you don't mind getting dirty because a lot of the venues are really just a cow pasture. And so there's fire ants, there's mud, there's gravel, uneven surfaces. So high heels, flip-flops, not recommended. Would definitely go with closed-toed shoes, um, boots, and sneakers are, are, um, are perfect. So what are some of the great finds that a shopper can expect to come across at Round Top? Like what are some of the items that people are selling? Is it mainly furniture? Is there a lot of art? Is it mainly antiques? Yeah. So Round Top ha will always, I think, stay very solidly in antiques and vintage. So that's how it started. And I think it will always be the core of the offerings, but you can now really find anything and everything. So art, home decor, new furniture, um, clothing, jewelry. But I would say what's really unique about Round Top is that you can find so many unique things you've probably never seen before. Um, and hearing stories about pieces from dealers, most of the dealers are very knowledgeable. And so they can tell you why a piece is unique and where it came from, the origin story. And I think that is something that shoppers now, especially like younger generations that want to shop more sustainably, like they're very interested in that. So I feel like that is the element that Brown Top has to offer. So much of that condensed into such a small area um and available to like a mass audience i would just say like if you've never done it before plan your trip in advance um because lodging tends to book six months plus out make reservations at restaurants when you can because at the end of the day 
the town can't sus necessarily sustain everybody who's coming in. So you'd be looking at like long wait times if you don't have reservations. Um, so that's what I would say. Those are kind of my, my top tips and to like allow yourself some cushion time so you can like go back and visit something that you really loved um, at the end of your time or spend more time somewhere, like always maybe plan a little bit more time at each of your stops just in case. Um, and then if you love something, buy it because it won't be there when you go back. Things sell out quickly. Things sell out quickly. And if you think something's a good deal, it probably is. Um, so, so snap it up while you can. Thanks for watching. Be sure to go to homeworthy.com for exclusive content, shopping guides, and so much more.